Yes. Good morning. It's good to see everyone here today. Um, I've got a couple of announcements I want to make to the internet crew this morning. If you guys have been on there any length of time, you'll notice the absence of Martha Stewart on there. She has went home to be with the Lord. If you don't know, and I ask you uh, this morning to be in prayer for her uh, family uh, as they mourn her loss. Uh, just uh, lift her up in your prayers. Keep her in your heart this morning as they as they try to continue on. Also, I have another prayer request for the internet crowd. My uncle Jim Stubbs having surgery on December the eighth. I would ask that you would all be in prayer for him. Uh, I know you guys are out there in the internet crowd. I know you guys are about a hundred and forty some strong out there. So I really personally appreciate the prayers for Jim. This morning. <coughs> We're going to be continuing uh, our study in, in, the, in the book of Matthew. We're going, we were looking at, and have been looking at, the events leading up to the birth of Christ. So, this morning, we're going to be looking in Matthew, first chapter. We're going to be looking at 18, verse 18 through uh, verse 25 this morning. So, with that, if you've uh, found your place there with me, in the Word of God. I invite you to stand with me this morning. The honor of reading that Word. Verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on the wise. On the wise. When, uh, as His mother Mary espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with the child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take Mary unto thee, thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from the sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, took unto him his wife and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and they called his name Jesus. God, pray with me this morning. Heavenly Father, uh, as we come to this section of Scripture, Lord, we uh, see many, many truths. We pray that your Holy Spirit would have free reign in this place. We pray that each and every ear could hear the truths of your Word this morning. These things we would pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. So, well, Brother Mark, what are you doing? We're in a different gospel this morning. Yes, we are. I wanted to talk at length about Joseph and his dream and also the prophecy this morning. And whether you have been in church two days or 35 years or longer, uh, you know about the virgin birth. You know all the struggles we've had, uh, Christians I'm talking about. Um, about the virgin birth. So let's look about this prophecy that that Matthew refers to, and it'll be in the Old Testament this morning. I find my way back here to Isaiah. <clears throat> the seventh chapter. I know I'm gonna be flipping around, I don't want to lose my place. Y'all bear with me just a second. <clears throat> We're gonna be looking at the seventh chapter. I want to tell you a little bit about what's going on in this seventh chapter that we're going to look at. The in particular verse I want us to think about this morning is verse, verse 14. Therefore, uh, seventh, uh, seventh chapter, verse 14. Therefore, the Lord Himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call His name Emmanuel. Now, think about this for just a second, y'all. 
This is over 700 years before the birth of Jesus Christ. You know, a lot of times I hear Christians say, well, I'll just step out in faith. Well, when a Christian says that, uh, he can step out on the written Word of God, the inerrant, infallible, and I'm going to leave my place. Inspired Word of God this morning, because it's written down in history, and this has been the most hotly challenged verse in the Bible, I can assure you. But have no doubt when it says, uh, Therefore the Lord Himself shall give you a sign, Behold, a virgin shall conceive. And then we see in Matthew here that Mary is found with child. A virgin has conceived and is going to have a son. We see that. We see uh, Scripture, and this is wonderful, when you can look at Scripture and see Old Testament Scripture supporting what happens 700 years, more than 700 years, down the road. We say, Brother Mark, I don't, I don't really understand all this stuff. Well, let me talk a little bit about it. I'm going to spend some time here in Isaiah. Uh, and a lot of times, you know, preachers don't fool around in the Old Testament that much. And you know why that is? The Old Testament is about judgment. The New Testament is about nothing but grace. But the Old Testament is about judgment. But we see here that this guy that is in charge during this time, and I always challenge y'all when you're studying the Scripture, to figure out what is going on and why these things are happening. Well, Ahaz is the king here of Judea during this time. Um, He is not a good guy. Now, um, well, Brother Mark, why would you say that? Well, he caused his children to walk through the fire. He sacrificed the idols under green trees. Now, well, you all know where, where the, what the temple was and what it was used for. It was for the sins of the people of Israel. Where was the, where was the, uh, where was the sacrifices to be made? They were to be made in the temple by whom? By the king? No. By the priests. Right? So when the Scripture tells us here that he was a bad guy, he was a bad guy. He was not a believer. God dispatches Isaiah <coughs> here. Let's read here in the 10th. Let me uh, not get ahead of myself too far. Uh, moreover, the Lord spake again, uh, uh, spake to Ahaz, excuse me here, it's the 7th seventh, uh, seventh verse there of uh, chapter 7. Uh, the head of Syria is Damascus, and the head of Damascus is Rezion. And with three score and five years, Ephraim will be broken. Okay, Isaiah is prophesying. The head of Ephraim is uh, Samaria, and the head of Samaria is Ramah's son. If you will not believe, surely you shall not be established. So the Lord has sent Isaiah here. He sent him to see Ahaz. He gave him a very clear instruction about where to meet him, where the pool was that he met him, and why is that significant? A pool... In ancient Israel, was awesome, huh? It really was. And what he does, the Lord speaks to him and he says, Ask thee a sign, verse 11, Ask thee a sign, Ask thee a sign of the Lord thy God, Ask it either in depth or height above. What's God saying to Ahaz here? He said, Test me. Show me a sign. He tells us in Scripture, Test me and know that I'm good. Put your faith in me and know that I'm good. That's God, okay? That's, that's God. That, we're not asking you to put your faith in a man. Ahaz says what? He says, uh, instead of him asking for a sign, what's he do? I will not ask, neither will I tempt the Lord. You know, he sounds kind of kind of like a believer there, doesn't he? I won't tempt God. I won't tempt my God. You know, I won't stand on a building and say, if you're really God, I'm going to jump off and you're going to save me. That's what tempting your God is. Uh, so don't get confused. God tells us to test him and know that he is good. But Ahaz here, he, he's, uh, you know, he's not a godly man. Don't think that. You know, uh, and it bears in mind Romans 8.28. He tells us, you know, all things. He's going to work all things for our good. Even these sinful people like Ahaz here, and he's a simple guy. He's going to work all things for the good of those who love him. You and I, when you know, when you see someone pass away, you will say, Brother Mark, I don't understand that. I guarantee you, God is going to work those things for your good. Uh, maybe for the good that He called home. 
or a person that he called home, you don't know that. But therefore, uh, the Lord Himself shall give you a sign, is verse 14. Uh, and, and what was that sign? Well, that sign was a virgin shall be with the child. Uh, you know, we get, we get to messing around and not really realizing who or what we put our faith in. You know, God writes His Word. Okay. Randall, He writes His Word. And then makes it happen in 700 years into the future. Tell me I don't serve an omnipotent God. Tell me I don't serve an omniscient God that knows all things and is powerful enough to make those things happen. You know, we get to looking at it and we don't really understand that 700 years prior to the birth of Jesus Christ, this was predicted. Well, you didn't say, Brother Mark, now you know my Bible says she was amazing. If your Bible says that, Throw it out. What miracle, Denny, is it for a maiden to conceive? If she's not a virgin, if you deny the virgin birth, Christian, you deny Jesus Christ. That's just the point of the matter. And that's what we're talking about here, the birth of our Lord and Savior. If your Bible says she's a maiden, throw it out. I don't care where you got it. It's no good. It's not accurate. Do you think for one second God can't preserve His Word? This King James Bible was written and under the threat of death if there was a mistake made in it. You know, I know you guys are searching for answers on the wicked internet, and they tell you about things that have left out, that were left out of Scripture. Well, the things that were left out of Scripture were things that were not and cannot be substantiated. The things that are in Holy Scripture have been proven. Uh, this virgin birth, again, 700 years before it happens, Miss Yule, God tells Ahaz 700 years before it happens to his prophet that it's getting ready to happen. Well, I don't know about getting ready. It's about 700 years in advance. But, but still, um, God tells His people what's going to go on. You're not asked to step out in blind faith. You're asked to accept God's holy word about what's going to happen and apply that to your life. We're talking about the birth of Jesus Christ. You know, I'm going to tell you something. If you want to start a fight, come in here with whatever scripture that you think you have and tell me that Christ was not virgin born and we'll have a debate here today. I'll show you in the Word of God where it says He was born of a virgin. And we can back that up through Holy Scripture. It's in air, and it's infallible, and it's inspired by the Holy Ghost. I mean, come on, folks. How much more proof... I'm losing my voice, brother. Don't have to pump me up a little bit. How much more proof does one group of people need? Do we have to be resigned 2,000 years Sitting in a church somewhere saying, oh, they really, the Bible really didn't mean that he was virgin born, mother. That's what my Bible says. And I can assure you, I accept the Word of God. Amen. If you do not, you have a problem. You have a faith problem. And I've labored here in, in Isaiah for a few minutes because I really, really want you guys to get the picture here. This is Christmas. We're talking about the birth of our Lord and Savior. So don't let some guy that believes that uh, the Internet is factual, it's been proven over, why they have to have somebody censoring it all the time to say that something's untrue when they post it, if it's factual, it is not the Word of God. If you guys want to know why you don't have faith, you're not spending the time that it takes to produce faith in God's Word. Amen. I mean, you know, if y'all want me to beat you to death today, I can, but that's really not what this is about. It's about accepting the Word of God. And if we've got a problem with that, we've got a faith problem. We've got a believing God problem. We shouldn't have that. Uh, so, when we talk about the Old Testament, it is very convicting. And I know a lot of preachers shy away from it. I understand that. But when it applies, uh, you know, you sh you're a miss if you don't preach it. Preacher boy, you're a miss if you don't preach it. And this prophecy is one of the bedrock principles of Christian faith. God predicts the Son 
his birth, his son's birth, seven hundred years before it happens. Come on, y'all. I mean, what does it take to make a person believe? What does it take to make a person believe? I guess I better get back to the scripture before I can spend all my time, <laughs> all my lot of time this morning in the Old Testament. But know that it was seven hundred years before the birth of Christ that it was prophesied. And there's over 300 prophecies alone in the Old Testament. Uh, and if you want to know more about the king, King Ahaz, go to Kings, and you can read about his discretions, his sacrificing to idols, his sacrificing under green trees, his making his children walk through the fire. You can read about how corrupt and messed up this guy was. God's still talking to him, telling him, I'm going to send you a sign. And what a sign that was. Is. Excuse me. Let's look here in verse 18. Let me get back to the scripture here. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was unwise. What does that mean, Brother Mark? Well, that means it was getting ready to happen. Now, where had Mary been uh, before this scripture? She had been with her cousin Elizabeth. Uh, again, uh, she was having John the Baptist. And uh, she was called, what was that word, Brother Donnie? Barren. She was called barren. She was well stricken in years. Uh, we're told from sacred scripture that, you know, they had all but given up. My God is the God of the impossible, isn't He? Amen. Absolutely. <clears throat> so we see here in verse 18, uh, Mary's was passed to Joseph. Okay, it tells us her husband. Her, and when we say that, uh, here in, in our culture, because we were engaged, it really doesn't mean much, does it? In our broken American culture, does it? Engaged doesn't mean much. You can break one of them any time, another. No big deal, right? Not so. Not so in Israel. It actually came with it. Uh, there had to be a, a ruling. A writ of divorce had to be issued. Not only that, Mary was found with child. That constituted what, guys? It wasn't Joseph's. That constituted adultery. <clears throat> i got to, got to flip back here again. I hope I ain't lost my place snatching this Bible around this morning. Uh, Deuteronomy tells us, and I'm going to read this in 22, uh, Deuteronomy uh, chapter 22, if a man, <clears throat> be found, I'm going to read a little bit of this to you, it's, a, it's important, it goes, to, it goes to proving the point I'm trying to make, if a man be found lying with a woman married to a husband, then they both have been Die both the man that lay with the woman, and the woman so shall die put away evil from Israel. If a damsel is a virgin, okay, we're maintaining a virgin birth here today, guys. If a damsel is a virgin, be betrothed to a husband, and a man find in the city, and lie with her, then ye shall bring them both out to the gate of the city, and ye shall stone them with stones that they may die. You see... The law in the Old Testament is serious stuff. You know, uh, if you think for one second by the Bible does not teach capital punishment, and this one's on me, this one's free, you're crazy. What did it say? They shall both be taken to the gate and what? Stoned that they may die, Denny. Mm. Uh, it's very serious stuff. A betrothal in ancient Israel took a writ of divorce, and if there was bad conduct, uh, especially, and y'all, don't hate me, don't hate the messenger's day, especially on the woman's side, she was going to get stoned. You know, it's always amazed me how usually the guy got away with it, but um, even in New Testament times, the guy got away with it. You'll, you'll remember the woman caught in the act of adultery. They didn't want to stone the guy, they just wanted to stone the lady, right? Hmm. But um, we see here that uh, in Israel, in the ancient day of Israel, when you were betrothed to someone and you were found with child, you were guilty of adultery, right? It was simple as that. And really and truly, 
Joseph could have had her stone legally. Right? We agree? But you know, God don't make mistakes when He picks people. When He appoints you to a station in life, you can be sure that you'll come through it and then you can, you can do whatever it is that He's decided for you to do. Well, how do you say that, Brother Mark? Well, He chose Mary, didn't He? But not only did He choose Mary, He chose Joseph. I know we give Mary a lot of credit. She's the mother of our Lord and Savior. I understand that. I'm not taking anything at all away from that. But look at Joseph. How many of you guys would be a hothead and say, Stoner. God didn't pick someone like that, did he? He picked someone with a calm spirit that, that thought through things. And also someone that loved Mary very deeply. Uh, you know, we... I'll tell you something, uh, we, can, uh, we can jump off here and, and cast that stone in a second, can't we? Not Joseph. He was a just man, it tells us here in verse 19, and not willing to make her a public example. He was minded to put her away privately. He didn't want her to be a public spectacle. He loved her too much. If you love someone, you don't want them humiliated in public, and you definitely don't want them dead, no matter what. Uh, they've done uh, to you. Mother, we'll take $20 in that plate. <coughs> no matter what they've done to you, you don't want to see them publicly humiliated or shamed. I mean, someone you care about, you don't want that. Do you? I don't. Uh, I don't at all. So, uh, Joseph here in 19 is, is pondering this. You know, he's trying to figure out what in the world to do. You know, he, he doesn't want Mary to go through any public stoning. He doesn't want her being shamed. So he's minded to put her away privately. But while he's following these things, what happens? Thank you, Brother Donnie. That's pretty music. What happens while uh, he's going through these things? The angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. He had a vision. He had a night vision in a dream. But what does the angel say to Joseph? He addresses Joseph as the son of David. He says, Fear not to take into thee Mary, thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Can you imagine Joseph's response to that, folks? Listen, she didn't have an affair, Joseph. But the Holy Ghost has come upon her. And that child that she has conceived is of the Holy Ghost. Wow. Now, you know, me and you are talking about this, and again, we're a couple thousand years removed, right? You can bet, you can bet that Joseph knew Scripture. You can bet that he knew Isaiah 7.13 and 7.14. He knew that Scripture. It had been preached to him many times, probably as much as, as for God so loved the world, God gave His only begotten Son, and whosoever believed in Him should not perish to have everlasting life. I guarantee you these guys knew Old Testament Scripture. Just as you do um, some scripture, right? So Joseph, uh, Joseph is given a clear instruction. And then uh, in verse 22, excuse me, in 21, And she shall bring forth a son. He's, he's told that she'll have a son. And you'll call his name Jesus. For you say there's his people from their sins. Wow. What a message to give to the husband. Now, yesterday he thought... My betrothed wife has committed adultery. That's what he thought. Mary, the one that he loved the most, has committed adultery. Today he finds out what she's going to conceive is a son. And not only is it a son, it's of the Holy Ghost. And not only is it of the Holy Ghost, it is Jesus who is going to save his people from their sin. In other words, the Messiah. He has found out in his dream that Mary is carrying the Messiah. I would think Joseph's head would have blew off his shoulders by this time. Or with that, that kind of a revelation. I mean, think about it. Your stepson is going to save the, his people. Is going to save you, in fact, Joseph, from your sin. Wow. That would be a mind blower, huh? And in 22, it talks about the... Uh, he's talking here in 22 about the uh, prophecy. Uh, again, now that was this was done, that 
uh, it might be fulfilled that which is spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and spring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, being interpreted as God with us. You know, <coughs> we, uh, we don't think too much about prophecy. I know I don't. A lot of times I'll look at the uh, New Testament and I'll be studying something and I, you know, I just, I just think that's the Word of God. I'm going to apply it to my life. I know some of you do that. But I challenge you, don't just do that. Uh, look back at the prophecy, as we did in Isaiah this morning, and realize that over 700 years before the birth of Christ, it was prophesied. <clears throat> and what was the prophecy? Behold, a virgin shall be with child. She bring forth a son. They shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted as God with us. You know, a lot of times, uh, we want to uh, sell Jesus short, but I'm telling you, stop doing that. He was an all-sufficient Savior, is an all-sufficient Savior, will be an all-sufficient Savior. He saved you from your sins. He's saving you from your sins today, Mother. And He will save you and justify you from your sins in eternity. Uh, he is that all-sufficient person that has saved you from your sins. Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel, 24 there, angel of the Lord had been him and took unto him his wife. You know, A lot of us doubt, don't we? Have a doubt. I mean, Americans especially. We want to see. We want to see. Well, what's the rest of the story? Every time, right? When we hear a, a scripture, a, a word from God, are we still doubting? Shame on us! Uh, don't ever doubt the word of God. Uh, Joseph didn't hear, did he? What did he do? He took. He took unto him his wife. He married. He. He married Mary. He did not consummate the marriage. Listen to me. He did not have any relations with Mary until after Christ was born. We need to understand that. Uh, that's uh, the fact of what's written in Holy Sacred Scripture. You know, listen. Stop debating with people about the Internet. I don't care what the Internet says. I care about what the Inerrant Bible and the Word of God says. What does it say? It says He took... Married to his wife, and he did not have any relationship with her, right? Any relations with her. He did not know her until she had brought forth her firstborn son. And what? He did exactly as the angel said. He named his name Jesus. You know, we have got to stop questioning Scripture at every at every. Point. We really do. I mean, God is able, more than able, to preserve His Word. He has. He has preserved you a copy of the Word of God. Everybody I know has a Bible in their house. Maybe overseas that's not allowed, but here in America you can have a Bible in your house. Uh, I'd encourage you to have a, a good Word of God in your house, not not something that is not true, not something that says maiden. Uh, that's not uh, true. That's not even a miracle. The virgin birth, is it miraculous? Absolutely. Was Jesus himself miraculous? Absolutely. Is he still miraculous? He's on the right hand of God, making intercession for you and I this very hour. Is that miraculous? Yeah. Did God um, have him come here on this earth, live 33 sinless years, and then kill him on the cross? And raise him on the third day to pay for your sins. I mean, it doesn't get any clearer, folks. Uh, right here, even before, uh, in Matthew's Gospel, before Christ is crucified, he shall save his people from their sins. How did he do that? He was a sinless. He never committed a sin. He never committed a sin. Uh, he saved his people from their sin. You know, if there's one lie in this Bible, we've got problems, don't we? The only thing that God cannot do is lie. He can't do that. Right. If it's written in Scripture, you need to bank on it. It is the only currency that's really going to exist in eternity, isn't it? Yeah, it is. So listen, don't be like Ahaz. You get to the point here. Don't be doubtful. Uh, you know, Know what you believe. 
And you can believe, don't believe me. Believe what's written in this Bible. It's not important what you and I think. It's important what the Word of God says. It doesn't matter if you believe it or not. If you don't believe it, you're not going. Oh, uh, the Bible's Word is not... You know, it's not necessary for you to believe it, for the Word of God to be true. The Word of God is true, whether you believe it or not. Amen. So to deny the virgin birth is a huge problem. Uh, you know, and I, for one, am not going to allow people to do that. Uh, if they can uh, prove it to me in sacred Scripture, we'll talk. Other than that, they're lying. Whatever they're doing is self-serving or serving the father, their father of the devil. Uh, either way, it's not serving the cause of Christ. So don't be like Ahaz. Um, don't be like Ahaz in any way. Uh, you know, give your life to Christ. It's what, that's what the Bible calls you to do, is to believe on Him. Uh, agree with God you're a sinner. Agree with God that He raised Christ on the third day to show that He accepted the payment for sin and then make Jesus your Lord and Savior. Listen, there's no better time, and you're not promised tomorrow. We get a funeral here this past week. A great saint went home. I promise you. She was a good lady. But she probably thought that she would come to, she would have an opportunity to hear the Word of God proclaimed one more time. She didn't. He called. We don't know when He's going to call. If there's some kind of decision in your mind today, Internet, or here, uh, make the decision for Christ. If Christ has spoken to you today, uh, if the Holy Spirit has said, hey, there's something in your life that needs cleaned up. Hey, do you really believe about a virgin birth? Today's that day. Today's the day when you need to make Jesus your Lord and Savior. You can't just have fire insurance. You can't just have it. You can't just be your Lord or your Savior. He's got to be your Lord. Y'all stand with me this morning. We're going to be dismissed in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this opportunity that we've had to be here in your house today. Lord, we thank you for the truths of your word. Lord, we just pray today that people would take them to heart. Lord, we pray today that you would be the cornerstone that they stand on, not some sinking ground somewhere that can't be proved or substantiated. Lord, that you would be the chief cornerstone, the stumbling block that many are going to stumble over. Lord, we pray that we would stand on you and on your word. Lord, we pray that each and every soul would, would be uh, arrived home safely back here at the next point of the hour. All these things we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen.